Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff. Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In the previous set of videos, we talked about the electrical conduction system of the heart. We talked about the pacemaker potential, which is the specific action potential of those cardiac conduction cells, particularly the sinoatrial node. And I mentioned in that video that we have two separate action potentials, and we need to make sure to distinguish them from one another. The one in the previous videos, that was the pacemaker potential. That is the action potential for the electrical cells of the heart. But as we know, those electrical cells of the heart will trigger the cardiomyocytes to contract. So the cardiomyocytes also have an action potential. That's the second one. And it is different and distinct from the pacemaker potential. So in this video, we're going to be talking about the cardiomyocyte or cardiac action potential. And here, we're really just looking at one individual cell, but understand that this is going to happen sequentially in each cardiomyocyte. Okay? Now, before I go any further, I just want to mention that I do have a video just before this in the playlist where we talk about all the biochemical events that are happening inside the cardiomyocyte during the action potential. So if you're watching that previous video, this video correlates with it exactly. It's the same thing, it's just in graphical form rather than biochemical form. All right, the cardiomyocyte action potential. We start off with resting membrane potential. So negative 90 millivolts is approximately what we have for a cardiomyocyte. Uh, the exact number is not super important, but you should recognize that the cardiomyocyte resting membrane potential is different from that of a neuron. Remember, neurons in some skeletal muscles are about negative 70, whereas the cardiomyocyte is actually even more negative. It's about negative 90. Now, we have three channels of interest here. We have fast sodium channels, we have potassium channels, and then we also have a type of calcium channel which is a slow calcium channel. Okay, this is called the L-type voltage-gated calcium channel. All right, the first event that we have here is we have opening of these voltage-gated sodium channels and we have rapid sodium influx. Sodium is a positively charged ion. So when sodium comes into the cell, it brings positive charge in. And so it takes the cell from being negative to basically making it more positive. Okay, so you have a lot of sodium that comes in here, and you can see that it spikes that membrane potential from about negative 90, even up to about positive 20, positive 30. Again, the exact number is not super important, okay? But this phase is the depolarization, or the initial depolarization. It's due to fast influx of sodium ions. At that point, sodium channels close, and we have the opening of two channels. We have the opening of the voltage-gated potassium channels, and the opening of these voltage-gated calcium channels, which are L-type. Now, I mentioned a few minutes ago that these were slow. That's important to understand, because the potassium and calcium channels open around the same time, but because the calcium channels are slow, uh, you don't see them open initially. Okay? All you see initially is the potassium channels opening, and you see potassium efflux. Efflux is the opposite of influx. So in efflux, an ion moves out of the cell. Well, if potassium is a positively charged ion and it's moving out of the cell, now the cell has less positivity. So it's going to become a little bit more negative or less positive. So you see initially, from the peak here after the sodium influx, when potassium starts moving out, you see the membrane potential comes down a little bit, becomes a little bit more negative. But it stops and it plateaus. Let's talk about that. This phase right here in this red line that's horizontal, this is the plateau phase. Now, the plateau phase is something we do not see in the pacemaker potential, we do not see in a skeletal muscle action potential, and we do not see it in a neuron action potential. In fact, the plateau is unique to cardiac muscle. Okay. Now, we'll talk about why we have this in a minute, but let's talk about how it happens. Remember I said that those calcium channels take a figurative minute to open? So they open after the potassium channels. So initially, it's just potassium efflux. But then, you still have potassium efflux. Okay? It's still going on, but now calcium starts to influx. Think about that. I've got potassium, a positive charge, moving out, and calcium, a positive charge, moving in. Okay? Think about it like this. If you have a class with 30 students, 
and you have five students come in and five students leave. You didn't change the number of students in your class, you still have 30 students. I could bring 10 students in and have 10 students leave, I still have 30 students. I've plateaued the number of students. So basically the way to think about it is for every positive charge that's going out of the cell, I've got a positive charge coming into the cell. And so there's no significant change in the membrane potential, so we see a plateau. In other words, the calcium influx balances the potassium efflux, and we see this plateau. Again, we only see that in the cardiac muscle. Why do we have a plateau? Well, to understand that, we need to think about the function of the heart. What is the heart doing on a macroscopic level? It's pumping blood, right? What would happen if you eliminated this plateau and the contractions were very, 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 very fast? Well, the chamber wouldn't finish pumping blood. It might pump a little bit, but it'd just be little squirts, right? It's more efficient if the heart takes a little bit longer to pump most of that volume of blood into the next chamber or the next vessel, right? So what the plateau does is it allows on a macroscopic level that chamber to finish contracting and it allows it enough time to contract to pump out the blood, okay? Now this is for an individual cell, but if this is occurring for every single cell, then you have this macroscopic effect where the chamber has enough time to finish pumping blood. And just keep in mind that while this plateau is going on, this is a positive membrane potential. The heart muscle is still contracting, okay? And so you're pumping blood during that. If you eliminate the plateau, now the heart can't effectively pump blood, all right? So that plateau is absolutely necessary for the cardiac muscle. Now at some point, the calcium channels close, but the potassium channels are still open. So calcium no longer influxes, but potassium is still effluxing. And so if you're losing positive charges from the cell, the cell is becoming more negative or less positive, and this potassium efflux eventually brings the cardiomyocyte back to resting membrane potential, okay? Now, this phase, once the calcium channels close to the time that we get back to resting membrane potential, this is really the repolarization phase or the relaxation of the heart. And once we get to this point right here, we can stimulate this cardiomyocyte to undergo another action potential to contract again. And that can be either due to one of two things. Number one, it can be due to an adjacent cardiomyocyte and we have the ion flow through that gap junction, which stimulates this cardiomyocyte. Or number two, it could be due directly to a cell of the electrical conduction system. Either way, we'll get this cardiomyocyte to contract and we'll do this action potential. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of the action potential diagram for cardiomyocyte. Just make sure you differentiate it from the pacemaker potential. And also make sure to check out this video right here where we talk about the biochemical steps that occur inside the cardiomyocyte. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.